Hi, this is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and I want to talk just for a few minutes about what is supposed to be a breakthrough in the Delphi murders. Uh, the Delphi murders uh, occurred almost five years ago in Delphi, Indiana, and two teen girls, Abby and Libby, were brutally murdered by some man that was in the park that they were in. They had walked across a bridge and then this creepy dude followed them and they actually recorded him, which is why this case has been so uh, fascinating to people because uh, there's a recording of the man who then killed them, um, but nobody's ever figured out who this man is. Well, today, breakthrough in the Delphi case. And I'm like, oh my God, they have actually come up with something. And so it's gone crazy in all the media and it's gone crazy on YouTube. Every YouTuber is out there saying, who's this guy? They've got the guy and so on and so forth. And my problem with the media has always been that I find them very unethical in the wording they use. Um, was there really a breakthrough or was this just a request for information uh, from the public by the police? And I'm going to just play what the police put out here earlier. I'm not, I'm putting this on my, my iPad so I don't get copyright infringement. And here it is. My name is Sergeant Jeremy Pierce, the public information officer with the Indiana State Police out of Lafayette Post. While investigating the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German, detectives with the Carroll County Sheriff's Office and the Indiana State Police have uncovered an online profile named Anthony Schatz. This profile was being used from 2016 to 2017 on social media applications, including but not limited to Snapchat and Instagram. The fictitious Anthony Schatz profile used images of a known male model and portrayed himself as being extremely wealthy and owning numerous sports cars. The creator of the fictitious profile used this information while communicating with juvenile females to solicit nude images, obtain their address, and attempt to meet with them. Okay. Pictured on your screen. Pictured on your screen is a good looking dude. Uh, that is that male model who probably has gotten more advertising in his life than he's ever had, unfortunately linked to a homicide, a double homicide. But this guy is not the guy that was behind this actual uh, profile. The guy behind the profile was somebody else and he was catfishing. Catfishing, in case you don't understand what it is, catfishing is when you put a fake profile up because you kind of know that the the girls you're after aren't going to be interested in you and the way you look. So this is an older guy catfishing for teen girls and he got them to send no, nude pictures to him and of course he's trying to find out where they were and apparently it was online about the time that the girls were murdered now the police i thought the indian and the state police did a really great job of requesting information from the public and if you click on my link below you can go to my other video on the case and one of the things i said on that video was that i was very upset about the way that the police had reached reached out to the killer to make him feel bad, to say, you know, you did a terrible thing. And to, I'm like, the dude's a psychopath. He's laughing at you. Don't do that. Don't make up, don't, don't try to communicate with the killer that way. It's ridiculous. And it makes you look kind of foolish. And the killer is not going to fall for that. So of course, five years goes by. So clearly he didn't. So this time, this guy um, stated very calmly, this is my name. I'm with the police. This is what we need. And then he goes on to explain exactly what he wants from the public. And he gives a detailed list of what he wants the public, the information he wants from the public. I thought it was really well done. Very dry, very to the point, no emotion. That's the way you do it. Because all that the this guy said um, from the state police was the information that they were requesting from the public with no nothing else attached to it. This is the information we want. This is why we want it. Now, they, this was earlier in the day, and I'm like, okay, good. They're going out to the public, and this is where the you know, internet goes, starts going crazy about who this guy is. Well, they found the guy, and I, I found him really quickly. And this is, this is the dude, and now you can see why he needs to catfish. <laughs> it ain't him, Then girls are not going to respond to this. They're going to respond to that. So, mm -mm, yes. So it is possible, possible that... Um, uh, uh, Abby or Libby could have responded to this guy and he could have said, meet me at the bridge in the park. And maybe he didn't even know the girl he, who was responding was going to bring her friend. And when they got there, they're like, ooh, and he's like, what'd you bring your friend for? And so things went badly. Now, that's a theory I can throw out there. If, if there was ever any connection between this guy 
and the actual girls. And from what they're saying now is at this point, there is no connection between him and the girls. So the police were doing due diligence because he was lurking around at that time. He was catfishing around that time. And he is a sex predator. So the police were doing due diligence in trying to see whether there's any connection between him because they had to find out who he was. First of all, they found out who he was, any connection to him and the girls. Now, they might come up with a connection. They might not. This is just part of the investigation. Uh, some people are wondering why, if this guy was around five years ago, why they didn't do it back then. And that is a good question. Why wasn't this investigated way back when they already should have known he was out there? But I don't know what was going on in the investigation. What I do know is it's not a breakthrough. Don't say something's a breakthrough when it's not a breakthrough. It is a request for information from the police to the public to try to forward the investigation. It's unethical to call it something that it is not. Unless the police tell you it's a breakthrough, don't call it a breakthrough because it is not. It is the police doing due diligence, asking for information from the public so they can make sure to either find, whoops, that's, he's gone now. Where'd he go? There he is. Either figure, find out if he is connected to the case or eliminate him as they should also do because you want to eliminate anybody around that you know looks creepy but isn't the guy okay so i just wanted to bring that up because it really bugged me when i saw a breakthrough and then it turned out that it really wasn't a breakthrough it's a request for information so i'm just always bugged by things like that in the media i don't like to see misinformation put out there and then people going crazy over misinformation so i'm glad that their request for information worked. They got the information from the public. They've identified Creepo. And um, we'll, we'll see in the future whether there's any connection to the case at all. But I'm glad they got him anyway because he is a sex predator and he needs to go to prison regardless of whether he's involved with a case in Delphi. So I just wanted to bring that up tonight. Um, so uh, if you're new here, please do subscribe. If you're not new here and haven't subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> please subscribe, like my video, share it, and hit the bell for notifications for everything else I do. And uh, I will see you next time at some point. And um, looking forward to finding out whether the guy does have anything to do with it. So till next time. Mm -hmm.